Today I'd like to talk about uh, Spa uh, Starlink, uh, which is one of the uh, Elon Musk's uh, companies that is using the SpaceX uh, rockets to launch the uh, little cube satellites into space. So this is kind of exciting news for satellite. Um, so what's going on? There's lots more. So basically, it's proving that satellites are really not dead at all. It's there's a large future in satellite. Lots of uh, billion-dollar companies want to put uh, these. Um, uh, new generation satellites into space so uh, what the, for example what uh, Starlink wants to do is launch uh, thousands of uh, these little tiny cube sats I don't know be like just little tiny satellites where compared to the satellites that these satellites connect to are the size of a bus I don't know which kind of a bus like a, a little small bus like a, a six-seater bus I don't know a, a 72 seater bus I don't know which kind of size of a bus but a bus of some kind anyway they, uh, they told me that the satellites in orbit and the geostationary or orbit satellites are the size of a bus. Okay, I don't know if that means the solar panels make it the size of a bus. I don't know. I know I can't see it with my binoculars, that's for sure. I can see the uh, International Space Station, which flies over, like you can get an app on your phone, you can see what's up in space, for example, like the International Space Station. So I've seen it, it looks like a plane that flies over slowly, and then I don't know how many minutes you'd see it, but I see it for maybe a couple minutes and then it's gone. That's what these little cube satellites will be like in low Earth orbit, 200 miles above the surface. So they're well lower than what the geo stationary geosynchronous satellites that we use for free satellite TV and all that good stuff. These type satellites with the that we're, we've been using for, for more than 40 years, <laughs> from what I understand, the first Telstar satellites were actually not even in geostationary orbit. They needed large uh, dishes uh, to receive them and they had to move as the dish was, or as the satellite was uh, going over and that's how they did some of the first trans Atlantic um, broadcast and then eventually they figured out hey we can just put a satellite uh, was it uh, put it uh, above the equator fly it so high high uh, that uh, it'll, it'll basically stay in the same spot and it will um, uh, you could basically set up a dish and just leave it there and you'd be be connected all the time which is great. Now with these new satellites, with these cube satellites, so they're gonna be flying over us, but there'll be so many of them, they'll be interlinked. So one will fly over this way, and another one will be coming along. So the thing that really interests me is what the antenna for that will be. Will it be like the size of a cell phone, which will be kind of cool. Uh, where you can have a device the size of a cell phone. Uh, they have satellite phones uh, where you can connect and talk, but they're very expensive. So is this gonna be a cheaper technology? Also, we have the GPS satellites, which are not geostationary satellites. They are in a lower Earth orbit and they uh, fly around the Earth and they, give, and they transmit data that uh, will tell the receiver down on Earth where you're located. Um, I'm wondering if this technology will be I know somewhat similar and also will it be able to be received with so uh, on a car uh, they tend to have these uh, for the Sirius satellite radios when you have that installed you have one of these black nubby boxes uh, that will connect to the geostationary orbit satellite Daddy. while you're driving around and the only thing with these things is uh, you you can't you will lose signal if you go under a bridge if you're next to a tall building that's uh, and you're on like the north side uh, you can lose signal Starlink uh, and having like a mobile service where for cars, for example, if they ever had that, uh, they probably have, I could see them having something like that where you can have a mobile internet connected thing uh, where it's not going to be a large satellite dish. I, I doubt it's going to be a satellite dish because a satellite dish will, uh, for, um, it won't, like for these uh, low earth satellites, they'll be like 
flying so fast and low that uh, having it in one direction, uh, you'll need to, uh, you'll need like more of an omnidirectional antenna. So from what I understand that Starlink is, that will uh, provide broadband internet, high speed internet, uh, to parts of the world that don't get it. I think Dish Network Direct and HughesNet are the three companies that have been in the business of doing uh, linking with satellites um, for internet access. But from what I've heard with people that use those services, they've ha they have, it has their problems where, for example, if you get overcast weather because they typically broadcast or are, are using the frequencies of KU and KA band, not C band, so there is the uh, rain fade. So the HughesNet dishes are kind of like what your home satellite dish is. You just uh, set it up and you have it aimed at the one spot in the sky and you're connected as long as there's not weather, you're getting your internet connections. Starlink system, which will be putting a lot more uh, satellites into the Earth orbit, from what I've read, be using KU and KA band. Similar to what this, these smaller dishes use, which is KU band. I'm very interested to see what this equip, the receiving equipment will look like uh, for this, uh, uh, when this technology um, comes, becomes available to the public. So right now, as of the recording of this video, I don't even know what the equipment to receive this looks like. I don't even know what frequency uh, there they'll be transmitting. And I don't know what the price of this will be. Uh, from what I hear being reported about it is it's, it's uh, to be a competitive price uh, for rural areas. I currently, I don't see the need for that for myself because I live in a, a, a area where I have access to a, uh, a coaxial cable connection that does get, uh, that I'm able to get high speed internet with. Um, but who knows where the future for cell phones will be as, will cell phones have the technology someday to just, uh, instead of having cell phone towers, you connect to a CubeSat in low earth orbit and your cell phone's connected to uh, high speed data wherever you are. I don't know how this technology will look like once it becomes available to the public. So also in C-band news, from what I understand is there isn't any LMBs, uh, C-band and 5G. So C-band and 5G, there isn't currently any, uh, an LMB on the market uh, that I know of that uh, can um, filter out if there's any 5G interference that is, uh, that will be coming uh, to the C-band users. Also, uh, from what I understand is that C-band is, uh, what C-band broadcasts are tending to do is they're getting rid of their satellites in North America that are gonna be on the far east and the far west, and they're gonna try to central them so that it will be more of the satellites in North America that the dish will be pointing straight up, which will mean so that instead of the dish pointing lower to the uh, uh, horizon, which when it's pointing lower, it would get more interference uh, from uh, terrestrial 5G using those 400, 300, uh, 300, uh, 3000 and 4000 megahertz range um, that could cause interference on the C band. By pointing up, it's less chance that it's going to get the terrestrial interference. I'm not the most knowledgeable on that stuff, but I, uh, from what I've read, that uh, seems to be what's coming. You definitely can find more uh, more about that information if you if you Google it, know where know where to find it. What the industry is pointing at, it doesn't seem that C band is going away anytime soon. I think C band and KU band could be beneficial toward this newer technology with the CubeSat technology that will be uh, using the. Uh, um, the CubeSats, so these CubeSats might be uh, using the geostationary orbit satellites for relays um, back down to uh, the lower uh, orbit stuff. I don't know how that all that will work, but I can see that as an, uh, a general idea of how that would end up working. As of not yet, there is uh, not really a 5G LMB uh, available, but I imagine that there'll be filters that will be able to block out the interference from from the from 5g even though there's other technologies that might come and go for connecting wirelessly like for example li-fi li-fi is um i hope we can see more and more li-fi technology like in your home where you have a phone that has a li-fi receiver transmitter and you can be able to connect to the internet without using electromagnetic uh radio but you can actually use light 
which where the spectrum is much larger. So there's all that technology coming up on the horizon too for this future fantastic world that we will live in where people are on their phones all the time. It's just a wonderful world, isn't it? With all this technology. <laughs> so my asparagus is growing up. We, uh, this, these months of the year, I tend to let the asparagus grow over uh, this, uh, the uh, Shaw Direct dish that I repurposed for uh, Galaxy 19. So now you can get most of the channels on Galaxy 19 with one of these, as I stated in many other videos, PBS channels on 125. As the stuff grows up, it kind of gets in the way of the dish. So I've set up another dish for the purpose of that. Yeah, and this dish here, which I stand in front of in a lot of my videos, I did have it at 99 West, um, but now I have the other one there. A Galaxy 19, 97 West, KU band. Um, is getting the asparagus growing up above it. So I just aimed this at 99 West, because I, I do like the some of the news channels and the faith-based programming. I love Smile of the Child and uh, channels like that. And yeah, so I put up um, on my four foot of KU band dish. Also, this can be used for uh, C band, but I have this universal. KU LMB, which I've been trying out. So thanks for watching, the usual stuff. If you like this video, please give it a like. It helps my ratings so more people can see this content. And um, uh, give it a share on, the, on my Facebook page. I have a Facebook group, North American uh, Over the Air Streaming. Uh, please, uh, if, you're if you're in North America, you're interested in uh, satellite TV, um, you could hook up with us there and uh, uh, we're a nice group there. We're able to help people.